when it comes to finding exploits and loopholes in the NFL rule book, we know those Baltimore Ravens, they are good for it. But with this new rule that the NFL just dropped a couple of days ago, this makes life so much easier for them. It makes life so much sweeter for Ravens general manager Eric DaCosta. But why? But how? Well, we're going to get into that shortly. But before we do, make sure you click the thumbs up button, leave a like on the video, and also subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on so you do not miss not a single thing. Now, we know before what the rule was when it came to roster cut down day. If a player was placed on injury reserve before making the initial 53-man roster, their season was done. That was a wrap. They could not come back. They were not eligible to, re to return at all that season. In order for a player to be placed on injury reserve and return later that season, they have to make the 53-man roster, and then they could be placed on uh, injury reserve. But what would happen in that case, there would be some players that were healthy that would not make the initial roster. So what the Ravens would do, they would cut them and they would do those handshake deals like, all right, we're going to cut you. But after the 53 man roster is established and we place that player on injury reserve and that opens up a roster spot, then we'll bring you right back. Now, with that, there's a lot of risk in that because those players could potentially get signed elsewhere another team could come along and be like oh ravens cut you you're a free agent now you know what come through come play for us and depending on the player the player might be like oh you know what no i'm, I'm loyal to the ravens or the player might be like you know what this is nfl it stands for not for long so you know what i'm going to this other team but now with this new rule with this new update the ravens have a lot less to worry about when it comes to that let's read it it says Teams no longer need to force a player onto their initial 53-man roster for one day, then go to injury reserve to then be eligible to return the same season. And that's big. It says, teams can now designate two players on roster cutdown day to be eligible to return. So basically, what that means is that they ain't got to play all these roster games come cut down time. If you got a player that you know is going to make the roster, that you know is going to make an impact a little later on in the season, but you still want him to be able to return, then you can designate two players for those spots. Two players to be placed on injury reserve, but they can still come back later on during the season. And that's really big for the Baltimore Ravens because we see it every single year have to, have they have to do all this roster manipulation. Like Jeff Zrebic calls it, roster gymnastics. But now, with this new rule, that makes it a lot more simple. And another rule that the NFL dropped too, they updated the designated to return rule as well. So now teams can use designated to return from injury reserve up to eight times during a regular season season and two times during the postseason now for those eight times during a regular season uh, you can use it on one player a maximum of two times so there may be some players where they have to come back a couple of times from injury reserve hopefully not uh, but that's how the new rules are so this is a big update for our Baltimore Ravens and they are going to use it like well not like crazy because you can only use it twice but you know they're certainly going to use it to the max because they go through this every single year but this will make their jobs a whole lot easier speaking of roster spots the Baltimore Ravens they cleared a roster spot today because they released wide receiver Tavion Robinson now not to be confused with Tavius Robinson, who they drafted last year, the defensive end, pass rusher. But this is an undrafted rookie free agent at the wide receiver position. So what are they going to do with that spot? Hey, it's a great question. But this leads me to my guy Gareth, his question. And shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. He's a Team Keep It Clean patron. I appreciate y'all. If any of y'all would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz if you want to show a little extra support to the channel. But don't worry. If you don't want to, that is A-OK. -okay. As long as you're still here with us right now, rocking with us, you subscribe, you turn the notifications on, you leave a like on the video, you are good to go with me. But my guy Gareth, his question, he said, hey, Engraven, uh, congratulations on your new daughter. I, I appreciate it. We appreciate that. Thank you. He said, so happy for you. So my question is, why have we not signed any post-June 1st cuts? There's so much talent there. Who would you love for us to sign? And he said, P.S., everyone, please like the viz. Appreciate you, Gareth. That is a great question. Why have the Ravens not signed any post-June 1st cuts? Who knows? Maybe it could be one of those things where the Ravens are in negotiations with somebody. And whatever players they possibly are in negotiations with, maybe those, that player trying to negotiate with somebody else at the same time, too. He's trying to give their price, give the, the price that the Ravens are offering to another team and be like, hey, you want to match this? You want to raise it? Well, what you want to do? Or they, he could be doing that with the Ravens, too. He could be like, look, y'all are interested, but this team is interested in me and they're willing to pay me X amount of dollars. 
are y'all going to match that? Y'all going to pay me more? What? Like, what's up? So they could possibly. I ain't heard nothing. Y'all know I'm an NFL outsider. No plugs, no sources, no connects. But they could possibly be negotiating with somebody. They could possibly be negotiating with somebody's in order to try to bring them in. And also, a lot of guys are on vacation right now. They might have told their agents, well, if you're a free agent and you still want to play, you ain't. You probably ain't telling your agent, don't call my phone. But that could possibly happen. Maybe like, look, well, I'm on vacation with my family right now. I'll get back to that NFL stuff in a little bit. Uh, because guys are taking this nice long break right before training camp. And maybe the Baltimore Ravens are waiting. Maybe they could be waiting because they may be thinking like, you know what? All right, we got this roster spot competition for this position right now. And we want to see how these guys are in training camp when the pads come on. We want to see how they do in preseason before we go out and go just sign somebody else to take that spot. So it, it could be a number of things. Maybe they trying to think about how best they want to uh, move their money and have their money and, and have because they like keeping around like about five million uh, as a rainy day fund for during the season. And, you know, with all the injuries at the rate of the beginning, they be needing that rainy day fund, unfortunately. Hopefully this, this year they don't need it. But anyway, so it could be a number of reasons why they haven't signed anybody yet uh, as far as the post June 1st cuts. But we still wait. And, and Ravens, I know I ain't said it in a while, but. I ain't forget about Justin Simmons. And the next question also came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Derek K. He said, hey, great, what's up, man? How are you, bro? I'm good. I'm real good. I hope you're doing even better. He said, anywho, I'm going to say it. Uh-oh. I'm not sure if I'm the only one, but call it random. I miss Jimmy Smith. Oh, Jimmy Smith was nice. We like Jimmy Smith a lot, especially when he was healthy. When he was healthy, oh, yeah, he, he was one of the best corners in the league. That was Jimmy Smith's only issue. Because he had enough speed to keep up with people. He definitely had the physicality. He could tackle. He could pick the ball off. He could high point the ball. Jimmy Smith could do everything. Jimmy Smith was nice. Only thing that held him back in his career. O only thing. Let me know if I'm wrong. But literally the only thing that held him back was injuries. That was it. That was it. When he was healthy. Ooh. That was it. That ball. But anyway. Continuing. He said uh, I miss Jimmy Smith. He was one of my favorite players for the longest. From seeing him when he came in as a young rookie, uh, he made plays, the interception against Cleveland and Cincinnati, the Jacoby Jones fumble recovery at the goal line, thanks to Kerry Williams, of course, LOL, the tip pass by Bernard Pollard, in which he caught and cradled it in when he held it down against Michael Crabtree at the goal line in Super Bowl 47. Yeah, and that was offensive pass interference, by the way. Anyway, continuing. Uh, he did all that as a young guy. Then slowly, little by little, all the vets were leaving. Jared Johnson, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Bernard Pollard. Eventually, Terrell Suggs. Jimmy became the old man on the roster. To holding his own against big names like A.J. Green, Calvin Johnson, Demarius Thomas, rest in peace, Jordy Nelson, Antonio Brown, Julian Edelman, and even Odell Beckham Jr. in 2016. It's crazy to think about that. How Jimmy Smith and Odell Beckham Jr. actually crossed paths in the NFL because it seems like they came uh, from like two different eras, in my opinion. But anyway, continuing, he said, "I know we all had uh, we had all pro Marlow as of late, and the excitement surrounding the future of Nate Wiggins, and of course, the man, the myth, the legend, literally one of your favorite Ravens players, Chris McAllister, aka C Mac." Engraven, I just don't think Jimmy gets as much respect and applause as I think he deserves. Hmm, that's interesting. That's interesting. I think the reason that that is is because of the injuries. I, I, I really do. Um, because, again, like when he was on the field, he was like that, man. He, he really was, but he just ended up missing from the field a lot, man. That, that was the only thing. But continuing, he says, yes, I love the Derrick Henry signing. I do. And I remember Dwayne Starks and Samari Rowe, but... That number 22 will forever be Jimmy Smith's number in my book. LOL. <laughs> He said, hey, look, King, that ain't for you, my friend. He says, shout out to Samari Rowe, Dwayne Starks, Jimmy Smith. Who else went toward 22 for the Ravens? Um, I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head. Oh, was it Pepe? No. Was it Pepe Williams? Because Jalen Armour Davis, he used to be, what, 25, I think? I think Pepe Williams wore 22 for a little bit. Then Derek Henry was like, oh, yeah, give me that. But anyway, uh, but anyway, he said, engraving, stay blessed. 
and God bless the little one. Hey, I appreciate that a lot, Derek. And I got to give a huge shout out to From Baltimore with love because they showed a lot of love. This shirt and some other shirts that they sent out, they are lovely, man. And this ain't no paid promo or nothing like that. I'm just telling them straight up, I thank you all because the shirt, the quality is great. It fits perfect it don't show my belly too much but it, it, it makes me look good it's hard to make me look good so i appreciate y'all a lot